Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a first look at Sparky Linux 2021.3. Now this is a distribution based on the rolling version of Debian, so Debian testing. And it is the first Sparky Linux that has KDE Plasma. So I've never actually used Sparky Linux before, or if I have, I've forgotten about it. Uh, just in the plethora of distributions I've tend to take a look at but I'm pretty sure I've never taken a look at it before and definitely not on the channel so uh, for those of you who have I thought I would start off by looking at the change log so they say the changes are the package is upgraded from Debian testing repos as of March 5th 2021 so they're just updating the software Linux kernel 5.10.13 Firefox 86 Thunderbird 78 so we're getting all the most recent version of versions of these software of this software this software you're gonna have to forgive me I don't know how to talk anymore it's just a thing that's happening my ability to speak words deteriorates deteriorate deteriorates fuck off <laughs> as the night goes on and it's just gonna get worse and worse towards the end of the video I probably won't even be talking anymore just more like grunting and uh, you know, weird sounds. Anyways, Alex Cute 0.16, Mate 1.24, XFC 4.16, Openbox 3.6.1, and the new version of KDE Plasma 5.20.5, which is what I'm going to be looking at now. The most recent version of, of VLC, uh, a newer version of Calamari's, which is going to be the installer, and that's Pretty much now it does go through if you if you're using this you know on your computer now you can actually go through and do an in place upgrade but we're going to be installing this in a virtual machine so let's go ahead and get started shall we oh, yep here we go let's see how this goes shall oh we get full screen right off the bat which is always a good sign. And we have a cursor, and we have some animations, uh, KDE splash screen. So that means should be probably going to take us into a live environment then. Yep. Okay, so let's see here. We'll go through the actual desktop environment once we get it installed. So we have Calamari's as the installer here. American English, that's what we want. And then Detroit. English US and default is good. Erase disk and swap. We'll do, uh, eh, we don't need to swap. We'll go ahead and do next and we'll type in a password here. We don't want to log in automatically. That is weird that that's checked out, checked by default. That's not usually the case. Usually you have to check that, you know, by yourself. But it's a choice. Use same password as administrator password. Use the same password for the administrator account. That is a good thing to have checked automatically because I think everybody pretty much wants that. So go ahead and hit install. I might have just missed it. But it's possible that there was no confirmation for where usually where after you selected your drive partitions and stuff, it asks for a confirmation. Are you sure you want to do this? I don't remember that happening. I'm also interesting to see that this usually there's pro progress in this right away. So far, this says zero, but we'll see. Because usually the first thing it does is, oh, here we go. Anyways, I'm going to cut away here and when it's done I'll come back and let you know how long it took okay in the grand scheme thing that took about four and a half to five minutes so we're gonna go ahead and hit the re actually I'm not going to be restarting this I'm gonna shut this down because I have to remove the insulation media from VirtualBox 
I'll do that and then then I will start it back up. Okay, we're restarting back up here. And we'll see how the boot up time is. Lately, these Debian based distributions have been really good, and that was quite spectacular, actually. I'm always impressed with this boot up, the boot up times of Debian. Uh, I don't know if it's just because maybe it's really good in VirtualBox for some reason, and it's not good on hardware, and I just haven't you know noticed. But it's always so good. Okay. And it's another instance of KDE Plasma starting up really, really fast. So the first run of Sparky. Thank you for installing Sparky Linux. This lets you fully upgrade the system. Install missing languages, language packages. You can perform all the jobs one by one or select one only. Hmm, English there. Okay. Would you like to do it now? Sure. So we'll just do this here. So that's just going to update the system. And because it's a... Uh, it's Debian testing, you're going to have a lot more updates than what you would on Debian Stable because you're going to, it's more of a rolling release. It's not complete ro completely rolling. They call it semi-rolling. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Now, granted, this was just released yesterday or today, so I'm not expecting a ton of updates. Your system, yeah, yeah, that didn't take very long at all. All right. APTUS locale will install missing locale packages for your language. Um... I don't see any of these things that I actually need here. Yeah, I think I'm just going to exit that because I don't need any other languages. It's weird that this comes up and they should separate the updates in the languages thing. So you can choose to do one or both. Maybe there was and I just missed it. Okay, so it's definitely still doing something. Okay, so let's first open up console here. All right, and we'll see. So first we'll do free dash M. Can I make it actually make it so you can actually see it? We'll run that again. It's so running on about 506 megabytes of RAM out of the round six that I gave it, or eight, eight that I gave it, excuse me. Um, that's about on par with for KDE Plasma these days. Let's do uh, uname-a. So we're running Linux uh, kernel 5.10, which is not the most recent, but pretty recent. 5.11 just came out in like this January or so, so we don't quite got the most re recent kernel, but this is much more recent than what you would get on a stable version of Debian. So let's uh, see if htop is installed by default. Nope. sudo apt install htop. So we got 67 tasks and 159 threads and still running about 512 megabytes of RAM even with HTOP open. So overall, very light on the resources, at least at startup. So let's go ahead and see 
Oh, I hate console. <laughs> All right. Let, so the wallpaper is very dark, but not the ugliest thing I've ever seen. So going through the applications, let's first check out the internet and check Firefox. So if Sparky Linux sets Sparky Linux as a their own homepage, but it's not online. It's actually a file on your computer, which is interesting. So let's see, uh, let's see here. I can never remember where the about thing for fire for. Yeah, there we go. So we got eight version eighty six, which is the most recent version of Firefox, which is good. Uh, other versions of Debian always use the long-term support or the stable support release of Firefox ESR, extended support release, I think, I don't know. Um, so this one, you'll actually get the long, the most recent version. This just looks like it's just basically using the standard Breeze theme. This is no, there's no custom theme here. Now that's not that surprising given that this is the first version of Sparky that has KDE. They probably haven't gone through and actually considered, you know, making their own theme. You know, it's just something that they're haven't got to yet, maybe. And there's nothing wrong with using just the regular stock KDE stuff. All right, going to, so we got icon browser for development. That's literally all there is here. There's not even the cute, normal cute stuff that you'd normally get. Uh, Gwen view for viewing images. Obviously, Ray Office is going to be here. Ocular uh, scan light is going to be for scanning. Uh, Internet, KDE Connect and Firefox. Obviously, KGET, which is I believe for GitHub. I might be completely wrong on that. Um, conversation. These are all KDE stuff. KTorrent. You can always tell it's KDE stuff because obviously it has the K in the front. That's how they spell stuff. A little weird. It's always been a little weird. Quite. This is quite RSS. So they have their own RSS reader that is installed by default. That's interesting. Never actually seen it before. It's probably like um, a cute version of an RSS feed reader. Thunderbird's pre-installed for email, multimedia. Eliza's for, I believe this is a, a music player. Yep. I do remember that. K3B is for, I believe it's uh, like CD stuff. Um, Camoso, I don't, is Camoso like for CDs? All right, so Camoso is actually for um, like webcams. The reason why it won't show up here is because I'm in a virtual machine. Okay. Sparky Tube is going to be like a, a, a YouTube client kind of thing. VLC is here. Oh. Voco Screen NG, I think that's like a screen recorder app. Office, the standard LibreOffice stuff. Science and Math is still going to be LibreOffice. Settings, there's normal uh, KDE settings stuff. So overall, very impressed with the minimalism and stuff on this because there's not a ton of extraneous stuff that they've installed. So really all they've installed is a media player, Eliza, and I believe Eliza is actually going to be the default KDE player from now on. I might be wrong about that. This Sparky Tube thing is something that they've installed in the RSS reader that we saw earlier. Other than that, everything else is KDE kind of specific. That's very nice. Now, it was like a, a 1.5 or 1.6 gigabyte ISO, but you got to remember KDE has a ton of dependencies, so that's the reason why the ISOs of K all Plasma distros are always going to be a little bit higher just because they have to deal with all those dependencies and stuff. You know, something that I didn't see here? Where's Discover? Discover's not installed by default. I don't see it. Let's look. Oh, wow, that's, that's fascinating. Okay, so they have Synaptic here as the package manager, but no Discover. That is an interesting choice. Now, I've never been a big fan of Discover. I think it's bloated. I mean, I hate to use the word bloat for Discover for anything, but it's not great. I mean, it's definitely better than it 
now than it was even a year ago, but it's still not. Of the application centers, Discover is by far the worst. And I mean, I hate to say that because I love the KDE guys, but Discover is not good. It just needs a complete revamp. It's interesting here that they've chosen to use Synaptic instead of having at least having Discover available. Especially because Synaptic's not the most new user friendly way of installing software. It's actually kind of confusing. I've at least I've always thought it was kind of confusing. It's just kind of it's not I don't know. I also didn't see Okay, so this is, I think this is going to be for like, what the hell is, what is this? Are these like, um, app images? APTUS, AP, I don't, I'm just curious. I mean, okay, so that's not the way you install a. So this is what they're using in place of Discover. I've never heard of this before. It's really, I mean, it's not. I mean, it's a little weird. <laughs> Let's see what this what it says. Sparky APT US App Center lets you perform many jobs on packages in graphical modes, such as popular application ins installations. Packages, upgrades, packages removed, and much, much more. The application the application uses YAD and HTML technology to work. YAD has been compiled with the, the Dash HTML. I got, this is stuff I don't really need to know. But it's not actually saying where it's installing this stuff from. I'm, in, I'm interested in... Cause it, given the name of it, I just thought that maybe this was... Oh, you want... I'm dumb. Apt, as in apt get... Seriously, Matt, what the hell's wrong with you? This instead of discover. I mean, it's a little weird that this is this instead of discover, but it's kind of cool, I guess, because I mean, it's something that belongs to them. Because what I was going to say before is that I didn't see a way that you could choose different repos. Because that's one of the things that I never really get into on my Debian reviews is that you can choose different repos to be like subscribed to. And that will give you different uh, packages that are available to you. So Debian testing is going to be attached to the more rolling type repositories that allow you to get the more recent versions of software. Install packages from repositories. Edit custom repositories. Okay, this is what I was looking for earlier that I said I didn't see. So like you can add different repositories. Edit custom repositories. Yeah, okay, there we go. And you can download the list, the repository list, list, and it will actually see it from there. Not the most user friendly ever, but at least it's there. Okay, and you can use, you can remove, you can clear the cache and stuff from this as well. I'll admit that this is not the most well-designed thing in the history of the world. I mean, the whole, you know, some of these things aren't even in line with each other. But it's possible that this is like the first version of this that they've used. Or maybe it's, this is just what they used for KDE. I'm not sure, but it's actually, I mean, it's not, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. In terms of application selection, I mean, let's look at, um, actually, let's go back here to graphics. Is it like a gra multimedia, maybe? No, graphics is right here. Graphics editors. So we got Blender and Darktable and Inkscape, Image Magic, GIMP, which is already installed. Now let's see, we know, wait a minute, GIMP was not installed. That was something different. fairly large selection which is fairly impressive I mean there's a lot of stuff in the stock Debian repos so it's not surprising that so we like we have Grant Gwenview let's see if it see it shows that it's installed yep it shows that it's installed so it's this is, so it's a it's a very oh it's an aware package manager so it knows that what you have installed which is good uh, I don't know 
that is the cleanest thing ever. Because you go to the, an app page and you get all this, the list of all the dependencies and stuff. Usually, I mean, they should maybe collapse that or something so it's not right in your face. I don't know. That's very, I mean, it's an interesting package manager. I'm kind of, I mean, it's weird that it reloads every time you switch between pages. Isn't that weird? That is a little weird. I mean, it's fast. I'm not sure if that's supposed to be like an animation or if it's just, it's if it's actually closing between pages and reopening. Uh, okay. Well, that is just, well, totally blown out there. Sorry about the camera there. <laughs> and it's going to get cooler and it's going to get cooler. At least a little bit. <laughs> I think it's because I moved my microphone. And the fo the focus on this camera is just horrendous. I had to turn the light off. Okay, so that was just a brief brief look at Sparky Linux with KDE. First impressions: If you like minimal KDE, where you can just go through and install the things you want to install, and you don't have to put up with other people's decisions on what comes with the distribution, this was really good. I mean. Obviously, I haven't used it for very long, but in terms of just a stock KDE experience on a rolling type release that's not Arch, this was very good. I was very impressed with the startup times. I was very impressed with the startup with the software selections that they have. Even if the software store was a little weird, uh, I mean, it's not something that I've ever seen before. It's it's interesting that they've chose to do do something custom when Discover does exist. Now, I didn't go through and test and see, like, I'm assuming, like, Snap and flat packs are, I wonder, you want to, let's go find out. I'm just curious. I want to see if either Snaps or flat packs are installed. So, let's do um, console and do, we'll zoom in here. So, Snap install mail spring nope snaps not installed so flat pack flat pack is not installed either okay so they've chosen to instead of almost every distribution has gone through and chosen a side in the wars between snap and flat pack if you can you know, call it a war um, they've appeared not to choose either side which is an interesting choice so that that means the only way you ch can install applications on Sparky apparently without installing one of these I mean you could install them obviously uh, the only way you'd be able to do install software would be through apt or their package you know their, their GUI application ma you know manager this apt center apt center get it uh -huh. I actually finally did eventually get it they should have just called it apt center seriously somebody has to have trademarked that <laughs> Anyways, so like I said, it was a good little distribution. If you're if you're looking towards Debian for a distro, and you don't want to use stable, but want something that's you know not you know <laughs> not stable, you can tell it's really late at night. Anyways, this would be a good choice, I think. Now, obviously, I've only scratched the surface. I'm sure that in the comments below, somebody's going to say, "Well, Sparky has this amazing feature that you didn't even cover." This was just a, for my first experience with Sparky, so uh, feel if you've used Sparky before, feel free in the comments below to tell me what's great about it that I missed out on, because um, chances are I'll come back to it eventually, and the more I know, the better these reviews be, you know become. So if you feel the need, you can follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash linuxcast. I really do got to come up with a better transition between ending the video and getting into the social. I'll work on it. I'll be more professional or something. I don't know. Unlikely. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash linuxcast. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by subscribing and hit the, hitting the notification bell icon or by going to patreon.com slash linuxcast where you can get all sorts of perks including polls and blog posts and early access to our podcasts and eventually early access to all of our videos so that's patreon.com slash linuxcast and speaking of patrons 
patrons. Patrons. I'm never going to get that right either. I'd like to thank our producers, Devon C., Marcus B., and Merrick M. Again, sorry, Merrick, if I'm butchering your name. Uh, you should definitely get on Patreon, Patreon and let me know how to pronounce it. Because otherwise, I'm just going to keep changing how I pronounce it. Eventually, I'll get it right. So, anyways, thanks for your support. Thanks for everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.